Okay, now we're all on lockdown. So that means for many people, they still have to work, save lives, caring for others, delivering mail, really important stuff. And those are really important people. And then you get people like me who can't work or perform live anymore, unless it's on Instagram in your living room. So I can either clean out my cupboard, sort out my sock drawer, discover TikTok, and then discover I'm really bad at it. Uh, learn some more guitar while spotting a crack in the ceiling I hadn't noticed before. All the while rationing the amount of toilet paper I can use, and then sorting out the sock drawer again. Or I can get super creative and come up with a low cost home show. The kind that I really like to watch. You know, the geeky ones on YouTube with the really snarky voiceover guy. They hate me cause they ain't me. That's the one. Uh, talking about all nerdy things that I'm really into and evidently I'm not the only one. So I proudly present to you, or embarrassingly depending on who's watching, this nerd person perspective. Cue low budget title sequence and annoyingly catchy theme tune. Nerd person perspective. What just happened? That was pretty good. Have we got any budget left after that? Anyway, uh, welcome to the very first episode of Nerd Person Perspective, Pilot. I will be your pilot for the duration of the journey. Oh, episode. What are you doing? What? What's wrong? Why are you dressed like that? Well, it's episode one, isn't it? I'm called Pilot, so I thought I'd dress up and go all out, you know. No, that's what they call the first episode of a show before it goes to series. What? So it's not even a series yet? Of course not. You're at home in your living room and you haven't even got trousers on. But I've got loads of good ideas, you know, at least enough for like three episodes or two, maybe. Well, if this one's rubbish, you're not going to get to make another one anyway, so get on with it. All right, keep your shirt on. It's not even a real pilot's outfit anyway. So if we could afford that. This episode of Nerd Person Perspective, I'll be giving a tour of a room that's home to my colossal collection of collectibles, also known as my man cave. Oh, hang on. That's better. Come in, I'll show you around. Nerd Person Perspective. Nerd Person. Nerd Person. Nerd Person Perspective. Nerd Person. Nerd Person. Nerd Person Perspective. My name's Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. And I'm a collectaholic. Over the years, I've collected thousands of action figures, memorabilia and collectibles, don't call it a toy, and autographs from the world of film, comics and TV, including Batman, Muppets, Star Wars. Oh, hi, BB-8. Can you get out of the shop? Thank you. More from BB-8 later, and I'll be showing the one collection I managed to complete. But when did it all start, I hear you saying? Well, it all began many years ago. Oh, hang on. Ah, um, oh well, turns out I haven't got any footage of when I was little. Uh, so I'll just tell you instead. Yes, way back when I was a boy. No, not that far back. Yeah, that's the 70s. Yeah, close enough. Toys were always in the family as my granddad had a toy firm and my dad worked and he'd take me to the toy fair where all the top toy companies showcase their latest stuff with these amazing displays that really captured my imagination. So I've got my dad to blame. I mean, thank for getting me started. And that was pretty much when I was hooked. The very first toys that I started collecting were based on this film. I'm sure you'll recognize. In fact, it was from the cartoon series and they were the figures from the real Ghostbusters. Uh, tell the truth, Mark. <clears throat> Side note, it wasn't actually the first toys that I started collecting, but we don't need to talk about that. Okay, it was in fact based on a cartoon called The Get Along Gang. The Get Along Gang, Get Along Gang. Ah, it's not annoying at all, is it? It's quite sweet. And my brothers used to bully me over collecting those toys, and they used to push me around. Tell the truth, I probably had it coming. This is BB-8, known to have many companions, human resistance pilot, scavenger from Jakku, and a droid that resembles a hairdryer. But after the internet reaction to Rise of Skywalker, bb 8 fled his home and finds himself alone and looking for a mate. A potential match has been sighted. 
BB9E, a lone droid of the First Order. We may be lucky enough to witness an extraordinary sight. This looks promising as BB9E looks on. It's risky, but BB-8 begins a curious ritual common among droids and stormtroopers, the banging of the head. Nothing. Stunned, this seductive display, failed to get a reaction, tries again. Impressive, but not impressive enough. Mating can take several attempts, so the young, hopeful droid has one last go. Remarkable. This time, BB-9E lets down his guard and signals it's game on. I've got a bad feeling about this. Finally, BB-9E reciprocates, and the magnetic force momentarily draws them together until a shy BB-8 pulls back. But when the force is calling, just let it in. BB-8 reverses, making sure to stay on target. Magnificent. Seconds later, a carefree BB-8 flees into the wild. The affair was always destined to be a short one, leaving BB-9E confused, low on fuel, and needing to recharge his battery. Moving on from that, so as I said, I then eventually moved on to the Ghostbusters figures. Like so many kids that grew up in the 80s, I was a huge fan, and all I ever dreamed about was having a proton pack so I could I'll just show it to So I could strut around my house and go, who are you gonna call? Yes, bastards. Aha! I'll put some really fancy kind of thing and make it look cool. Okay, hopefully. I'm never gonna get this thing back on there, so I'm gonna just hold it. This program has been brought to you by the wonderful world of Kenner. The real Ghostbusters toy line created by Kenner ran from 1986 to 91, featuring over 70 figures, Slimer, Ecto-1, and the Ghostbusters headquarters. Oh, and lots of ectoplasm. Love that stuff. The following year saw very few Ghostbusters toys, as the kids preferred He-Man again. Apparently, that was until NECA had an all too brief run in 03 that stalled due to a lack of the main team. Step and Mattel, who released a six inch line in 09 based on the two hit movies, and even saw a WWE mashup. Why not? Also, prop replicas and the team from the reboot. They crossed the streams in 2015 as Diamond Select released the most comprehensive line to date around the films and cartoon. Full Circle 2020 with Ken and Al Hasbro back in the busting biz with a line that features Afterlife and the wave that started it all. So lots more to come to break the bank. But when they come through the door, I guess he just wants some more. I think I better call a therapist. Holy grail. Okay, this figure here is quite rare because Calling to Tracy. Released a year after Burton's Batman, but when comic book films were still few and far between. Dick Tracy was based on the 30s comic series. Colourful characters, larger than life villains, rousing Danny Offman's score and an all-star cast. A line of action figures were produced by Playmates, but one of them would become the stuff of toy legends for years to come. This figure actually gives away a huge spoiler at the end of the film. The character, the blank, this mysterious character that is taking out villains, turns out to be Madonna. Madonna's character, Breathless Mahoney. If you take off the blank's mask, it actually reveals Madonna's face. Well, it kind of looks like Madonna. The film company's like, hang on, this toy reveals a huge spoiler for the movie, so we have to take it off the shelves. With the blank figures returned to the manufacturer, the plan was to re-release it in the next wave, but due to the film's poor reception, it never happened. So only a few we're actually out in the wild. But I finally got my hands on one. Well, I say I've got my hands on it. I've never actually touched it because it's actually been graded and kept in a box. So it can never be, never be out again. Coming up, the world of Simpsons in Collect Them All. And I'll be revealing the toy that's particularly close to home for me. Well, they're all close to home because I'm at home. But anyway, uh, for now, here's a giant Muppet. It's really hard to complete a line of toys. Why? Because they release so many of them. All the exclusives and the obscure ones, hardly anyone remembers, but the set's not complete without them. I would say the Muppet line came out around about 2001 to 2005. And in my opinion, they're some of the best figures ever made. Certainly in terms of detail. 
They really got like the foam what texture a nerd. Of, the, of the Muppets characters. Remember I mentioned about the uh, Playmates World of Simpsons figures? Well, that's one set I just had to collect them all. Well, at least try. With over 200 figures, 40 interactive play sets, including the slightly controversial for a toy line, Moe's Tavern. You can put the figures on and press buttons and they all start talking to each other. I can remember many times I would hear these figures just talking to themselves and you'd realize the batteries were getting a bit old. <laughs> they don't have the room to display all of them. It would probably take up a room in itself. With thousands of figures, you could never collect them all. From Playmates to McFarlane and NECA's greatest guest stars with Tom Hanks, Tom Hamilton, Tom Petty and Tom Jones. Whew, that's a lot of Toms. Well, it's not unusual. Oh, I've wasted my life. Before I go, just a few more favourites. Like Winnie the Pooh next to two terrifying clowns. Sorry, kids. Mr. T, Rocky, screen legends and comic book icons. David Bowie's codpiece? A1! Hang on. A1? That's right, even we were immortalised in plastic once, even if it was only the size of a Kinder Egg. And though my dream of becoming an action figure hasn't come true, I've learned with a pen knife, super glue, and too much time on my hands, dreams do come true. Thanks for watching Nerd Person Perspective. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the bell, and tell any friends you think might endure it. I mean, enjoy it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Third person perspective.